So, you decided to install Gen 2. You've made it past the initial installation, you've read the AMD64 handbook more times than your favorite comic, and you've gotten your system to boot. You're feeling like you've reached the peak of the Linux mountain. But now, it's time to start installing packages. The official package manager for Gen 2 is Portage. And we interact with Portage on the command line with the emerge command. But there's a lot of different options to the emerge command, more than probably any other Linux package manager. So it can be a little bit intimidating, but after watching this video, you'll be emerging like a champion. So a standard emerge without any switches is just going to install whatever package is specified. And since we're on Gen 2, this will of course download the source code of the program and start compiling it based on our CPU architecture, use flags, and C flags that we specified. Check out my video on use flags to learn more about that. Now, of course, I'm not going to re-emerge Firefox because Firefox is a pretty large package and I already have it updated. Well, not updated, but I already have it installed, so any updates that I have to do, I'm just going to do them overnight. So the first command option that we'll talk about is clean. Clean, as its name implies, will clean up your system. And it does this by looking at all the packages that you have installed and removing the older packages. Now, one thing that trips some people up with clean is that when I talk about clean removing older packages, older packages in this case refers to a package that was emerged before another one. It doesn't refer to package versions. So if you were to emerge, say, version 5.0 of a package, and then later on you decide to emerge version 1.0 of a package, Clean is going to remove that 5.0 package because you had emerged it before the 1.0 package. Then there is Dep Clean. Dep Clean will remove packages that are on your system, not associated with any other packages. So basically, it just removes dependencies that none of your packages are actually using. And it's a good idea to use Dep Clean if, say for example, you're going to switch browsers or you switch desktop environments, because both of those types of packages tend to require a lot of dependencies to be installed with them. They tend to be pretty heavy. And if you're no longer using a package, then there's no real reason to have all of its dependencies hanging around on your hard drive. You can also use a lowercase c as a shorthand version of DepClean. The prune option will remove older versions of packages. In fact, it will remove all but the latest version of any given package that you uh, have on your system. Now, be careful when you run this prune, when you run a merge with the prune option, because the prune option can remove packages from your world file as well. Now we have the search options, and with search, we want to use a double hyphen for the command switch. And search, as its name implies, will search through the repository for packages based on the name that you entered. And capitalization doesn't matter, it's not um, case sensitive. So for example, I can do a merge search Chrome, and this is going to search for all the packages that have Chrome in its name. So we have like um, the uh, Chrome driver, we have Google Chrome, uh, there's probably the um, Chrome bin, which is the pre-compiled binary for it. You can also do this with regex options as well. So to do that, all you would have to do is put a percent sign in front of the string that you're searching for, and then it's going to let you use uh, regex options as well. <clears throat> we can also search for packages based on their description. So you see here that it doesn't just give you the name of the package, it also gives you the description. We do that with search desk. So if I wanted to just search for any package that had browser in its description, and this is probably gonna return a whole lot of stuff, 
uh, we can do that. Now, obviously, descriptions tend to contain a bit more than the name. So if you search for something like um, search desk browser, like I just did, this isn't necessarily going to just return web browsers. This is going to return anything where the word browser appears in its description. Next option that we'll talk about is the sync command. Now, sync will basically update all of your repositories. So if you're coming from a noob-friendly distro like Mint or Ubuntu, this sync command is basically the same thing as doing apt-get update. And if you're looking for the equivalent of apt-get upgrade, Gentoo's emerge switches for that are a little bit more verbose. So to upgrade all of the installed packages and dependencies on your system, we want to do emerge, and then it's little u, capital D, capital U, keep going with bdeps equals y at world. And then this will do a full system upgrade of all the packages on your system. So I'm gonna quit this again because I haven't actually done an upgrade in a while and I don't really want this video to just be <laughs> watching my computer update all day. Um, now to remove packages, there's a couple of options that we have. The safest option is to use the CAV switch. When you use a merge with the CAV switch, it will remove the specified package only if no other packages depend on it. Now, this is the safe option because obviously, if um, the package you're removing is required by other packages to work, and those are packages that you're actually going to use, then you don't want to remove this package because you're going to end up breaking your system and you're going to just have a really bad time. But if you don't care about that, if you're you know, brave and you wanna throw caution to the wind when you're deleting packages, you could do capital C and that will remove a package even if it is needed by others for it to work. Now, the next section of command switches has to do with package masking. So packages get masked for a number of reasons. Typically, it's because the packages are unstable, and by unstable, that just means that the developers haven't fully tested whichever package is in question. But in my experience, this hasn't really caused me any problems. There's no security concerns that I've run into with these packages, um, no crazy system unstabilities that are being caused, and I'm currently using over a hundred unstable packages. Um, most of the security tools that I do when I'm playing Hacker Man and doing pen testing, uh, most of those packages are considered unstable by Gen 2 standards. Um, now, you may have tried to install a package on Gen 2 before, and you get some type of error that the following use changes are necessary to proceed. Like if I were to emerge CMonkey, I know that this file, or this package rather, uh, requires some stuff. So yeah, we see here the following use changes are necessary to proceed, and then it gives us these comment strings, and then it gives us uh, basically the use change that we could put in to our package.use. And I believe I showed you guys this in the use flags video that I did on my channel. So there's a number of ways that we can solve this um, error that we get when we try to emerge. So we could just copy these strings directly from our terminal. And these ones aren't actually needed. These are just comments right here to basically help you understand why that string is in your file. This one's the only one that really matters. 
So we could just copy that to our package.use and you guys know that my package.use is a little bit weird. I started doing them all as individual files and then got lazy. So just pretend like this file here, x11 no root is a package.use file because it actually is. It just goes by a different name. So I could just copy and paste these manually into here, but there are some options that we can do with Emerge to save us some time. So what we could do is we could Emerge CMonkey and we could use the command auto unmask write. And it even tells you to do this here in the Emerge command um, or in the results output if you ever pay attention to that. So when we do this, it's going to run. And this is a little bit misleading um, because by default, auto unmask isn't really writing any changes to this file. So again, we can look in the x11 no root and there's no changes there. So what did it actually write? Well, if we show all files, you'll see that I have this um, hidden file CFG with a bunch of numbers after it. And if I vim into that, let's uh, type it correctly, you'll see that my strings to emerge CMonkey actually got written to here. So what you could do with this is you could just simply rename this file to um, you know x11 no root or something else like that. And that is one way to get around it, that might be a little bit easier for you than actually copy and pasting it from your terminal, especially if you haven't built in copy paste functionality into your terminal, because not every terminal comes with that out of the box. Like this, um, this build of ST that I'm using, I don't think has, uh, yeah, I haven't enabled copy paste on this yet. So that may be one way to do it easier, but the easiest way to do this, would be to use the auto unmask continue command. So what this is going to do, as you'll see, is it's going to actually write the changes to the real package.use file, and it's going to continue with the emerge. Now, I wouldn't recommend running this blindly, because obviously you don't want to just change up your use file, your package.use file a whole bunch if you don't actually know and understand and feel comfortable with the use changes that it's going to make. And I can go and show you guys, so it really did for real uh, update this. Let me actually become root and uninstall this because I actually have no use for the CMonkey program at this time. Oop, did something wrong. That's the, uh, the problem with opening Vim when you have caps lock on. It's a dangerous game to play. All right, let's delete that. And finally, while we're on the subject of use flags, we can actually specify the use flags that we want to use or that we want to exclude for a package right there in our emerge command. So the way that we would do this is we would say use equals and then just start typing the name of whatever use flag. So I guess let's do KDE and let's do no gnome three because you can also do a minus to um, to exclude that use flag. So we type our use and then we'll do emerge and let's say Chromium again, which of course we're not actually going to finish running because Chromium's a big program and I've already got Firefox, I'm more than happy with that. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. Hope you found it helpful. Hope it demystified Portage and the emerge commands for you a bit. Like and share if it was helpful.